Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and today we are getting hands on with the brand new PS5 Slim. This is PlayStation's latest console that is smaller, slimmer and has new features that we've not seen on the previous model. Now this did launch in the US a few weeks ago, but it's only just launched in the UK today so I'm excited to get hands on and show you what it does. We'll get it unboxed, set up and then talk about what's changed and how it compares to the original PlayStation 5. So if you were thinking about buying one of these or not sure what it offers over the other model, hopefully today's video will help you out. Ok so I've opted for the physical edition which means it comes in the classic white box as opposed to the black one if you go digital. We've got the new PS5 on the front and references to some of the best playstation games on the back including Spider-Man 2. Oh and I've just noticed there's no handle on the top to carry it like on the original PS5 box. And then inside we get the power cable, some little plastic feet, a USB-C charging cable and an HDMI 2.1 cable. We also have the standard white DualSense controller which is exactly the same as what we've seen before. Now I wouldn't normally show you the manuals as let's be honest no one really reads these but it looks like PlayStation have put some serious thought into it. Things like how to get started, how to remove the disk drive and how to install the new SSD so that's pretty cool. And then we have the new PS5 itself and wow this definitely feels and looks noticeably smaller than before. So the overall design is very similar to the original PS5 where we've got the white panels and the black centerpiece along with those popped collars at the top. But as you can see the biggest difference in the design is the fact that we now have four panels instead of just two. So the bottom two have the same matte finish whereas the top two are now glossy. I'm actually surprised by this as glossy finishes are always a pain to keep clean from fingerprints. But this looks okay. And then separating the top and the bottom panels is a very thin line that goes from the front to the back. Now when I saw the photos of this when it was first announced I wasn't so sure. But I could definitely get used to this. And then if you look across the bottom we have these tiny triangle, circle, x and square icons on the panel. And we also get those tiny icons built into the grain on the inside of the panels as well. Now on the original PS5 we had what about 15 or so different sets of covers that we could swap out. And PlayStation have said that in early 2024 we will be seeing more panels come into this console. Now as soon as we get some official console covers I will definitely be changing these to black again. Along with a matte black centerpiece. And when that time comes, swapping these out is going to be super easy. All you need to do is pull away on the plates and they will pop right off. But until then, we're just going to have to stick to white. Now you might have noticed this already, but the ports on the front are slightly different to what we've seen before. So we now get two USB-C ports instead of one of each. Now this is going to be useful if you're plugging in say a PSVR 2 headset and you still need another USB-C port. But of course if you needed a USB-A port, we still have two of those on the back. Along with a LAN port, an HDMI and the power input. Also around the front there's only the power button, there's no disk eject button as that's on the disk drive instead. And the benefit to this is I no longer have to guess which button powers it on as I literally forget every time I press it. So as this is the disc version we obviously get the disc drive included and already fitted. But what's great with the new PS5 is we can add or remove this disc drive pretty easily. All we do is pull gently on the panel and it pops right off. Then under that we press this little button and the drive itself will pop off as well. Now unfortunately we don't have a spare panel to replace this with. But if we did we could essentially turn this into a digital PS5 and keep it even slimmer. But if you did decide to buy the digital PS5 you can actually buy the disc drive separately and fit that. It works out at about £10 more expensive if you do it this way, but at least you will have a spare panel to fit. Then refitting the disc drive is just a case of lining up the connector and pressing down until it clicks. Bear in mind that if you do buy the drive separately you do need an internet connection the first time that you install it, that's just so it can register and download the latest update. Now when it comes to the stand on the new slimmer PS5 it's not like what we've seen before. Instead of getting this plastic base that you can use to stand your PS5 either vertically or horizontally it comes with these. So these tiny feet are designed to slide into the opening between the two covers and kind of prop the PS5 up. And actually if you look really closely you can see how it's using those PlayStation icons we saw earlier to help balance it. But I'll be honest I'm not sure this is it. I mean it's sturdy enough and it's not going to go anywhere but I don't like seeing these feet from the front. Oh and another thing is you can only use these if you lie it down horizontally. If you want to stand it up vertically you will actually need to buy a vertical stand which is sold separately for about £30. I do have one of these on order but weirdly this doesn't launch until December the 1st so that's a few days after the console launched here in the UK. Although what's cool about this stand is it will work on both the original and the new PS5. Ok so I had to compare these two side by side just to see how different they looked. PlayStation stated it's about 30% smaller and although the photos didn't do it any justice online I would say it's noticeable when they are side by side. They clearly look similar with the overall style but it's a little bit shorter and narrower. It also weighs a lot less coming in at 24% lighter. Now which one you prefer the look of comes down to personal preference. If anything I thought I would lean towards the original PS5 but seeing the two side by side I actually really like the look of the new one. Stick some black plates on this and this is going to look good. 
I guess if you wanted a space saving PS5, this one definitely ticks that box. Although I don't like the position of the HDMI port on the back as it means the HDMI cable is sitting pretty high when looking from the side. As for the specs and performance of the new slim PS5, other than the size, weight and design, there's only one other difference that sets the two apart, and that's the internal storage. By default, the original PS5 comes with 825GB of storage, of which just 667GB is usable, whereas on the new one it now comes with a 1TB drive, of which around 850GB is usable. So those extra 200 gigabytes of storage will definitely be useful for the next Call of Duty update. Other than that, the CPU, GPU and RAM and all other specs are identical. So you're not gaining or losing anything from the slimmed down PS5. There's even the same internal SSD bay under the top panel. So if you wanted to expand on the original 1TB of storage, you can remove this metal cover and fit an M.2 drive in here adding up to 8 terabytes of storage. But what that means is, it doesn't matter which console you play on, you will get the exact same experience from the new or the old PS5. Oh, and one thing I didn't notice until I'd powered it on, was the LED strip has moved from the top of the PS5 down to the bottom. It's not a huge change, but something I thought I'd point out. Overall though, I do like the look of the new PS5 Slim. It's similar to what we've seen before, but with some subtle changes. Extra USB-C ports, a smaller size, removable disk drive, and extra storage. Now if you have a PS5 already and you're wondering if it's worth swapping over to this one, I would say unless you need a smaller PS5 in your setup, it's really not worth the change. It's basically the same with a slightly smaller case. But if you were buying your first PS5 today and you had the choice between both, I would go for the new one. The extra storage is worth it alone, and we'll probably see console covers on this that you won't get on the old one. So that was a quick look at the new PlayStation 5 Slim. Now drop a nice PS5 Slim in the comments and I'll give you a thumbs up for staying right till the end. And if you did enjoy today's video, check out my PlayStation Portal video next, as I fully reviewed that on the channel a couple of weeks ago. Okay, so thanks for watching. Please like, sub and follow me everywhere. Until next time.